I have a mystery for you to solve. There's a file with a thousand lines in it, and each of these lines is made up of numbers. Can you find the line that's the longest and made up of only odd numbers? In this video, you'll learn the repeats operator of regular expressions. Repeats gives you the ability to say some pattern is repeated, some number, potentially an unknown number of times. By the end of this video, you'll be able to solve this mystery. When it comes to writing regular expressions to search text with, there are three fundamental operators you need to know. This is the last of them. The first two were and then and or. If you missed those videos, you can find links to them above. In this video, we'll be using the term repeats because that's how I think you should read this operator. But more formally, this is called a quantifier or if you don't know how many times something is going to be repeated, closure operator. This operator is really useful for being able to search for things like email addresses or web page URLs where you don't know how long of a match you're looking for. If you wanna follow along with today's example, there's some instructions in the description of this video. So I've opened the noisynumbers.txt file in VS Code, but you can use any code text editor you'd like. Let's imagine we're trying to search this file for sequences of the lucky number seven. So maybe two sevens in a row or three sevens in a row. How can we write a pattern that will search for two or three sevens and match either of them? Well, we can use the or operator as first introduced in the previous video. What if we wanted to match uh, two or three or four sevens in a row? We could add another or operator and then uh, a sequence of four sevens. You can imagine that this type of a pattern can grow in length very quickly. So let me give you an example of using the repeats operator. We can say seven is repeated between two and four times. And this pattern below is going to match the exact same text as the pattern above. These two are equivalent. Notice how much shorter this is. So I open my find menu and I'm going to select the option to be sure that we're searching using regular expressions. And now I'm gonna try specifying the pattern seven is repeated between two and four times. And notice that we have 72 matches in this file. And the first match was two sevens back to back, two sevens, and then look, there's three sevens matched back to back in a sequence. What if we wanted to search for exactly four sevens in a row? We could update our pattern to say seven repeated between four and four times. And we can try that out. There's one line in this file that repeats between four and four times. And if you're thinking it seems a little bit silly that we need to specify between four and four times, the people who created the regular expression syntax agree with you. And this is a special case where if you want to match an exact number of repetitions, you can use only the number that you're looking for. This usage of what we're calling the repeats operator, and I'm calling it that because that's how I think it's easiest to read and to think about writing an expression like this. Right? Seven is repeated four times is the pattern we're looking for. This is technically called a quantifier operator where we're giving a quantity of matches that we're looking for in repetition. Right? But it's a little bit harder to read seven is quantified four times or seven, a quantity of seven, it doesn't come off very naturally. Right? So why I would encourage you to think of this as the repeats operator is because it reads very naturally as seven is repeated between two and four times. When you're first writing and reading regular expressions, it's important to be able to separate out what are the literal characters your pattern is matching against. For example, this number seven is what we're looking for as a match, contrasted with what are the operators. And in this case, this is an operator where we're not matching any of these characters as a part of the text that we're looking for. This is some extra information we're giving to the regular expression engine saying, hey, I want you to look for this, the number seven repeated between two and four times. What if we wanted to write a regular expression that says, I want the number seven repeated two or more times. So we don't actually know how many times there might be a sequence of sevens repeated. Well, this is actually a capability we don't have in our pocket yet. The quantifier operator gives us some shorthand for not having to write this really long or sequence. But when we don't know how many things we're looking for, we couldn't do that without a repeats operator in a special form of it. So again, we're searching for the number seven. We're gonna use the repeats operator, which is the opening curly brace. And the first number that we're going to use is the lower bounds of how many we're looking for. And then we're gonna provide an upper bound. Well, what if we don't know our upper bounds? Well, the creators of the repeats operator syntax decided if you leave out an upper bound, we will match an unknown number, as many as we can. So this pattern says seven is repeated two or more times. Let's try it out. 
And notice that this matches the same number of patterns as we had before, because we don't have any lines that have more than four sevens in it. But let's try adding one. Let's try adding a really lucky line here. So lots of sevens in a row. And notice that if I am searching my matches, that one matches just fine. This use of the repeats operator, where we don't have an upper bounds, where we're gonna match as many repetitions as we can as possible, is fundamentally a new capability that we didn't have using the or operator or the and then operator. This is where we get a really new capability. What if we wanted to look in our text for patterns like one, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, two, and you get the point. Repetitions of two or more, one followed by two. Our first attempt at writing this pattern might look something like one and then two is repeated two or more times, right? However, the repeats operator has a precedence that is higher than the and then operator, which we talked about in the first video. And so using parentheses to group the precedence here, as written, this pattern would actually match one and then two repeated two or more times. So we can try that out. One, two, two or more times. And so notice that we're matching one followed by two twos, and this isn't the intent that we wanted. Well, as we saw in the last video, we can use parentheses to our advantage, and we can group the and then operator of one and then two before we search for two or more instances of that particular pattern. So if I update my pattern here, notice that we match one, two, one, two, and then one, two, one, two. So there's only two instances of this pattern, and there aren't any cases where it repeats more than two times. But if we were to add that ourselves, we would still see that we get two matches in this file. When first learning to use the repeats operator, the most confusing aspect of it is this precedence issue, where it binds more tightly to what comes before it than and then binds, right? So this takes precedence over one and then two, and so this is the pattern we get if we don't write any parentheses. The best way to begin writing regular expressions is to make liberal use of parentheses to specify your intent on what is it that's going to be matched. Let's try changing context and using an example in the English words file. How can we find words that start with A, E, or E, A, end with Y, and have at least four letters? So we can think about the first criteria as the characters A, E are going to match or the characters E, A. And in the last video, we learned about the OR operator. We can say either A, E or E, A. And we can use the beginning of line anchor to say the, a line will start with either A, E or E, A. And we've successfully encoded the first criteria. The second criteria ends with a Y. We can use the character literal Y and then the special character end of line to match a line that ends in the character Y. So how about that last piece of criteria, greater than or equal to four letters? Well, if we're starting out with two letters and we're ending with one letter, that means that we need to match one or more characters in the middle, and we don't really care what they are. In the first video, we learned about the dot special character, which will match any character except for a new line. And in this video, we learned about repetitions. So we can say match any character one or more times. So let's try this out, and we can read this as the beginning of the line, and then AE or EA, and then any character repeated one or more times, and then Y, and then the end of line. And notice there are 71 words in our dictionary that match this particular pattern. And we can see that the words vary in length. We're not specifying exactly how many times any character is matched. So as a recap, we can take any regular expression and just after it, if we add the curly braces and then some lower bound number of repetitions and some higher bound number of repetitions optionally, like that could be left off to find an unknown number of repetitions. This is how we make use of the repeats operator. I wanna emphasize how important it is to use parentheses around the regular expression you're looking for repetitions of if you're looking for more than just a single character. Outside of a classroom, it's hard for me to gauge whether this made sense or not. So if this made sense to you, please leave a thumbs up. Or if you have specific questions or are looking for some clarity on something I said, leave a comment in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. You now know the three fundamental operators available to you when searching text using regular expressions. Next, we're going to learn how to search and replace in text using regular expressions by introducing one additional capability called capturing groups. And they're closely related to how we use parentheses in our patterns.
But before you move on to the next subject, I would encourage you to try to solve today's mystery. Can you find the line of this noisy numbers file that is made up entirely of odd digits? You'll find a link to where I explain the solution to this just above here in the right. Otherwise, I hope you'll join me in the next video where we introduce capturing groups. I'm Chris Jordan, I'm a professor who teaches computer science, and on this YouTube channel, I'm hoping to introduce some fundamental concepts in a way that you can follow along with. If you're up for that, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you back here next time.